and a late shower or two for Sydney. In Canberra, 14 at the moment, mostly sunny, 14 and showers easing in Melbourne. Hobart, 16 right now and partly cloudy in Adelaide. It's 14 degrees with a shower or two. 22 right now in Perth, mostly sunny day. And in Darwin, it's 32 degrees and sunny. Plenty more coming up after the news. It is 3 o'clock in the east, 2.30 in the centre and 1 o'clock now in WA. Good afternoon, Sarah Hall with the ABC News. The establishment, design and implementation of the robo-debt scheme will be examined by a royal commission. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has announced the inquiry will look at the automated system that wrongly accused people of owing Centrelink money. He says the final report, which will include measures to avoid a repeat of the situation, will be handed to the government in April next year. We need to get to the heart of why this occurred. Uh, This is such a serious issue. We committed at the time to this Royal Commission. This is a commitment that we have a mandate for and a commitment that we have a responsibility to fulfil. Unions are increasing calls for an overhaul of wage deals ahead of next week's Jobs and Skills Summit. Current bargaining agreements cover less than 15% of Australian workers, but employer groups are sceptical about the idea of rolling out enterprise bargaining more widely. Our MIT Distinguished Professor Anthony Forsyth says getting industry-wide pay agreements in the child care and aged care sectors would be a good start amid mounting cost of living pressures. So many workers uh, in low-paid sectors, they are stuck on award minimum wages and at the moment um, enterprise bargaining is failing them. A senior official at Tasmania's Department of Communities has told the Commission of Inquiry the volume and similarity of complaints coming from former Ashley Youth Detention Centre detainees is very concerning. With the latest, here's Will Murray. Yesterday, the Assistant Manager at Ashley told the Commission most staff at the centre don't believe historical allegations of abuse against their colleagues, partly because they think former detainees are just trying to get money. Today, the Department of Communities Head of People and Culture, Jacqueline Allen, told the Commission she'd read over 300 such complaints. She told Commissioners they're too similar and range over too long a time period to be dismissed. Some of them are so detailed um, that they are very concerning. She told the inquiry many of those complaints are only now being investigated. A triage nurse has told a coronial inquest into the death of a seven-year-old girl at Perth's Children's Hospital. The whole emergency department was running under a lot of pressure at the time. Jacqueline Taylor was the first staff member to assess Ashwarya Ashworth in April last year. Ms Taylor said based on what she observed and what she was told, she believed that a low urgency score was appropriate because it seemed the child had symptoms of gastro. However, she said at the time, staff were under a lot of pressure and there had been a long period of staff fatigue. Ms Taylor said while there had been changes since the child's death, including increased staff levels, she believed the hospital was not yet up to an ideal standard. The Bureau of Meteorology has released its spring outlook, with those in the eastern flood zones expected to receive above average rainfall. ABC Weather's Kate Doyle explains. Spring rainfall is highly likely to be above average for the majority of the east of the country thanks to conspiring climate drivers. The current negative Indian Ocean dipole, positive southern annular mode and the potential La Nina are all working to supply abundant rainfall to the east. The rain and cloud is expected to bring about lower than average daytime temperatures, particularly in the central eastern regions, but in contrast, southwest Western Australia and western Tasmania should expect a drier than usual spring as rain bearing frontal systems get pushed south of the continent. Qantas has halved its loss for the past financial year thanks to an exceptional recovery in travel. Business reporter Michael Yander with more. Qantas posted a full year loss of $860 million, down from the previous year's loss of nearly $1.7 billion. The improved result came as borders reopened and travel picked up towards pre-COVID levels, driving revenue 54% higher. The sudden increase in travel, combined with staff cuts and illness, has seen a record level 
example of flight cancellations and delays. But Qantas Chief Executive Alan Joyce says the airline's operations should be running close to normal by next month. Some analysts say cost cuts and increased airfares should see Qantas profits rise above pre-COVID levels this year. And Woolworths has revealed that its full-year earnings were almost flat as floods, COVID outbreaks and surging inflation drove its costs higher. I'm Sarah Hall and for more news at any time, you can download the ABC Listen app. 